level or commercial uh, commercial um, level and uh, also through the generation in some countries in the Pacific, they are also doing sorting of waste at this level, but in some Pacific Island countries, they are just mixed, everything is mixed and, and then the government or the private sector will be uh, sorting this waste when they were collected uh, during the collection of services. Yeah? Secondly is the collection. This is where um, those who are doing the collection services, the schedule of compactors or trucks or waste collection, they have to plan and schedule all this so that they can be able to deliver the collections of waste at, at the household level or the commercial level. Um, and also this includes providing beans. Um, if in, the, in that particular country they have recycling initiatives, so this will be able to assist uh, with the collection of uh, waste. And then it goes to the next stage, which is the transportation, where they have to transport all this waste um, to, 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 to the sites where they do the transfer, recovery, or disposal, depending on the country. Fourth is the recovery and, this, and treatment. This is where they will be able to sort the waste for, for all the recyclable waste that can be recycled. Uh, within the country or overseas, this will be sorted out and will be um, uh, redirected to um, the transfer stations or whichever facility that they will be doing the recovery of this uh, uh, recyclable waste, for example, plastic, glass, paper, aluminum, and so forth. And also this is where, this is a stage where they do the treatment and recovery of other waste streams. Um, this, for example, like the organic waste or the green waste, they can be uh, reused or recovered as uh, compost um, for gardening. So after this stage, everything that's left over, it will be transferred to, to the landfill or the open dump site, depending on what uh, disposal facility available on the, in the country. And uh, for example, landfilling, and incineration that can be for healthcare waste. In some countries, they have incineration incinerators that are available to uh, properly dispose of all this healthcare waste. And this has to be done in an environmental management uh, and friendly way. Yeah? So this is something that we also have to look at because in the Pacific countries, we we're still uh, trying to manage all the, the disposal of waste. So it has to be environmental friendly to avoid or, or to avoid or to reduce all the environmental impacts. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, going on to what is waste. Huh? As you can see on the screen, there's a lot of different types of waste. And uh, waste can be defined as unwanted, unusable materials. And waste is any substance which is discarded after primary use or is worth less defective and of no use and it has to be disposed. So with all this waste, as you can see, if we are not um, properly managing the waste, it, you can see that how it, it looks like when at the final disposal uh, site. So these are, they, have, they come in different types of waste. So I'll be just, um, grouping them into three types of waste just to make it um, easier for us to uh, um, understand the types of waste. But I know there are some experts here, they know the different types of waste. Um, but I'll be talking about the three types of waste, but I'll be focusing more on the solid waste um, in this presentation. So next uh, slide, please. So this is the... Solid waste is one of the types that I was talking about. And this solid waste, it will um, include all the paper, the glass, the plastic, the metal. These are the waste that falls under the solid waste. So this is where um, most of the recyclable waste they come from this waste. And um, this is something that we can, these are the, the solid waste that we can use to recycle, reuse, and so forth. So this is something that we can um, 
reduce um, the the waste generation for for these types of waste. And I'm and I know that Samoa is doing that for for the plastic waste, which they have done the, the plastic ban. So this is something, it's a good initiative and it's a good uh, strategy in order to combat the increasing of these types of waste. Um, going on to the next. Okay, these are the, as you can see on the screen, these are the types of hazardous waste. Um, hazardous waste is waste with properties that make it dangerous or capable of having a harmful effect on human health or on the environment. The hazardous waste, the, um, the examples, uh, batteries, e-waste, healthcare waste, and all the other types of waste, the household waste that, I mean, the, for example, the detergents and so forth, all these are, uh, are hazardous waste. You can see on the on the screen. So these types of waste is something that we really need to look at uh, and, and to ensure that they are properly managed, they are properly uh, stored so that uh, they don't have any um, impact on our environment. Um, next, please. <laughs> this is the third um, types of waste that I would like to share with everyone is the liquid waste. As you can see, the, the liquid waste, um, it can be defined as um, liquids as waste, water, fat, oil, or grease, used oil, liquids, solid gas, gases, or sludges, and hazardous household liquids. These liquids that are hazardous or potentially harmful for the human health or the environment. As, I, as I'm sure that uh, SPTO have already um, presented some of the, um, the, the case studies that they have um, with all these uh, environmental impacts. So these are some of the things that will cause all these environmental impacts to our marine and even our environment. So this is, these are the, um, the liquid waste that we need um, to address and to ensure that we have a proper plan for this type of waste. Um, to avoid all these uh, um, environmental impacts and even to our health. Um, next, please. Okay, impacts of waste, um, as I have already highlighted in some of the slides, but impacts of waste, as you can see, there's a lot of impacts. Uh, if we are not managing our waste properly, uh, it has environmental impacts. Um, it causes the depletion of our natural resources, increased pollution to the environment, land, air, and sea, um, land degradation, soil contamination, impacts on our marine life and biodiversity, uh, water pollution, uh, methane generated by organic waste when decomposes. So there's a lot of impacts that waste has on the environment. So this is something that we really need to um, to focus on and to um, address uh, as we go on with our daily life to have proper management of such waste, especially with different types of waste, so that we won't be able to um, come to these types of uh, um, impacts on our environment, marine life, and even our health. Uh, secondly, is uh, health. Um, the impact, the impact of this uh, waste is through the diseases that caused by bacteria, insects and vermin that lives and breed in the landfill. So this is where they, the development of these uh, diseases, they also come from all these uh, bacteria, insects and vermin that lives in the, in the landfill and they will um, cause all these other impacts on our human health. So this is something that we really have to look at is the impact of waste and trying to minimize uh, or reduce the impact from the very start up to the, as the process that I have already, the waste management process that I have already shared in my previous slides. Okay, next please. Okay, as I mentioned, um, uh, for the Samoa pl plastic bands, I, I will not go into, detail, I know that you already know um, some of plastic bands, 
which is something these are strategies that uh, waste management uh, has to put in place in order to reduce the amount of waste um, in countries. So this is something that uh, Samoa has already uh, implemented and uh, it has been endorsed in 2018, which is the waste plastic bag management regulation. And this regulation, it will assist in managing plastic problems in Samoa <clears throat> with commitment to protect the oceans and marine environment. As I have mentioned before, this is a good strategy in order for, our, for Samoa to combat the increasing of uh, plastic waste and to start reducing the impact on the oceans and marine environment. Uh, next, please. Okay, as I mentioned before, um, there are two things that uh, has been uh, done in uh, or conducted in Samoa, is the waste audit and the, and the Samoa's waste accounting. I'm just highlighting them and I want to know that, I want to share that uh, these are the, uh, are the good tools or for Samoa to be able to improve their waste management strategies. And also it will be improved the data and information collected from these two uh, important documents. So waste audit, um, it, it was carried out in 2020 um, in Upolu and Savai to, to collect uh, the information on the waste stream composition and quantities of different waste stream. So in order to, to know these types of um, um, the composition of waste stream and the quantities, this will enable someone to better plan better plan and uh, ahead what or, the, or they can identify the gaps or which country, which uh, uh, types of waste that they need to address uh, in the waste composition. So this is very important uh, um, information to for waste management planning. And for some more waste accounting, it focuses on collection and management of solid waste for three financial uh, years. And it focused on the collection and management of solid waste for, um, and all, also it includes solid waste collected and disposed of at, at the Fainata landfill in Upolu and solid waste exports. So all this data and information is very good uh, for Samoa in order to um, plan ahead for waste management and to improve and uh, mostly to reduce the impact of such waste uh, types onto our environment, as well as our health. Um, next, please. Okay, this is just to show you how um, this data that I have uh, extracted from the waste audit, these are the types of data that uh, waste management plan needs in order to uh, address uh, waste management. And for example, in, in somewhat, um, uh, they have uh, gener uh, the results of the waste audit. They were able to know the, the waste generated annually, the waste generated per person per day, uh, the waste generated per household, and even the waste disposed at the, the landfill. So this is very important in order for you to do the waste management plan to assist with the, the increasing of waste and the types and addressing the types of waste. Um, next, please. Thank you, Ivan. Um, this is just to show you um, that uh, waste management, the generation of waste, uh, this is at the regional level. Um, it shows that uh, the generation of waste annually um, through the these regions, it's a, it's a very large number. It goes in millions and tons, a million tons um, for each uh, region. Eh? So we are here at the Eastern Asia and the Pacific region, uh, which is the highest so far, but I'm sure it's uh, the East Asia were the ones that are generating uh, more because we are just more Pacific Island countries. But uh, this is to show you that uh, this is a global um, issue and it's not only in the Pacific, it's everywhere. Um, waste is increasing each year and it's something that we need to deal with um, 
not only at the national level, but also we have to do our part as an individual or commercial or so forth. So this uh, waste issue is, is everybody's uh, responsibility. So this is something that we need to think of and try to reduce waste at, uh, um, at the earliest possible or whenever we do development, it has to be, uh, we have to have a waste management plan in order to address this. Um, next, please, Ivan. Okay, way forward to reduce waste generation. Something that I want to share with you is the circular economy. I know that most of you know about this uh, circular economy. Um, circular economy is a systematic uh, approach to economic uh, development designed to benefit businesses, society, and the environment. Um, in contrast to take waste linear model, as you see on the far right, there's a linear economy, there's a model, and the circular economy. So most of us, we are here, we're still here at the linear economy. Um, just, we just do, we just take the, the local materials, the resources, make, and then we dispose. The circular economy um, is, is the regenerative design consumption of finite um, resources. So the circular economy we're using in the loop of extracting few resources to close the loop, just reusing whatever that we have. All the reusing of the materials, materials that has been consumed. Um, and this, I'm sure that it can be applicable in the tourism sector. Um, I will be talking about that in the next slides. But we need to look at, because we don't have very little, we would rather have So, uh, um, extracting more resources to eat, uh, in order to um, do our daily businesses. Uh, okay, yes, thank you. I um, just want to, to show you that uh, if, we, if we're still at the linear, uh, I'll explain in the previous slide, uh, we'll be. Mm -hmm. Have we lost Susan? Yes. <coughs> okay. No, the cracking wasn't my end. It was uh, so my, my mic on mute. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. back now. Sorry, our internet is not really good from us, my side. I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes we, can hear you. we can hear you. Okay. okay. Shall I continue? I hope I am on that uh, um, slide. Okay. So this is just to show you if we are still at the linear economy, the, the increasing of waste will be, um, the quantity will be going on for each year, it will increase so forth. But we, if we do the recycling economy, we can reduce the, the generation of waste. But with circular economy, that will be really good for us because it will be the, the end product, the end product which is to be disposed of, it will be less compared to the linear and the recycling uh, economy. So this is something just for us to have an idea of uh, the models that I have uh, already um, explained before. Next, please. Okay. So um, this is something that I want to share with you um, with the tourism sector, because we want to 
reduce the amount of waste. Um, this is uh, something that we need to look at. I know that some of the um, hotels now they are using, um, um, they are reducing plastic waste as with the, uh, some more plastic bands that uh, I have already explained, highlighted. So these are the things that we can use uh, as a way forward is to get rid of all the plastic waste. Uh, for example, the, the cut, cut, cutlery, sorry, set um, that were used before is plastic. And uh, if we want uh, the circular economy, as I have already uh, mentioned, you can see at the far right, um, the cutlery set. This is uh, made from wood. This is just an example. Um, these are done, these are used in some countries. Um, and they are using, they are reusing it for, for compost. And this can be, this will be closing the loop instead of uh, getting more um, resources for making this um, uh, wooden cutlery. Um, at least it's going back to um, as compost, which will um, be able to help with the gardening. And this will come back to, it will be replenishing the resources that has been taken away. So that's also, high, um, as a, on the second, um, so um, there are also like, it's been divided uh, the, the alternatives to the plastic used um, on the right. So these are the, the things that uh, we can use in order to alternatives instead of using this uh, plastic waste balls uh, can uh, very um, if careful with what we buy or what we import into country to do our um, our um, our services for example in the tourism sector you can see that there's a lot of waste generated in that uh, the far left corner of the screen oh sorry i'm i think i'm still on the, the previous one anyways okay moving on to that one um, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, plastic waste. In. So what we need to do is to reduce. Um, another way is that uh, with uh, hotels, I can see that in some hotels in some other countries, they are trying to do away with all these small um, plastic bottles used for shampoos. And because this, this also ge generates a lot of plastic waste. Um, they are using the, a larger dispenser for conditioner, for shampoo, and this is reusable. Um, this is refilled. Um, it will be refilled and uh, it will um, reduce the generation of all these small bottles, uh, plastic bottles in the hotels. Um, next, please. Okay. And it, in the case of organic waste, or shall I say food waste, because in the tourism sector, these are, the, these are also the waste that generates from the tourism sector is the food, organic waste. So in this, uh, in reducing the organic waste, this can be redirect or for, for making compost, as I have shown in the pictures in the, in the, in the middle, um, this, uh, uh, compost there. This is these are designed like for local um, compost, but the the one below it is the food compost um, machines for hotels, which is used in overseas. Um, uh, these are used in the Grand Hyatt in Melbourne, so they are using this, and they use it for, for for compost, and they use it for their garden. So those are the compost as I have uh, on the far right. Uh, corner. Those are the, the products uh, from the composting of the organic uh, waste and that those composts will be reused for, for gardenings. These are done in some of the hotels in overseas, which is very, um, it's, it's a very good initiative to decrease this amount of uh, uh, waste going to the landfill. So this is redirecting, this is like closing the loop as I have uh, mentioned before with the circular economy. Um, next, please. 
this is another this is another uh, thing that uh, is used in in other countries and uh, in some of the Pacific Island countries, these were trialed as project uh, pilot projects. Um, and this is really good for, I think it's, it's more useful for hotels because they have a lot of uh, organic waste. But this, this um, uh, biogas uh, 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 projects or pilot projects, um, they, they, they have to have inputs of organic waste and animal waste. Um, for example, in, in Tuvalu, they have this uh, pilot project since we have uh, um, pig, uh, pigs uh, here in Tuvalu and there's a lot of animal waste, uh, the manure from the pigs. So they are reusing that for this, uh, uh, the biogas. So with the biogas, all this are uh, inputted into this uh, system and it will, the output of it, it will be able to uh, have the biogas, which they use for, um, for cooking. And the liquid uh, um, come it is used for the fertilizer for for the gardening. So this these are some of the things that uh, I want to share just to help with uh, the how we can better plan or develop our waste management plan at the tourism sector, at the hotels. Um, these are something that we can use in order to reduce the amount of uh, waste generated at the, at the tourism sector. Um, and also this is very important because um, we, the hotels will be able to, to have um, a good environmental um, initiatives that will help to be environmental friendly, especially with the EIA, I'm sure all this, uh, if they have uh, the, the waste management plan in place from the beginning, how, what are, are you purchasing for, for the services, the products that you buy, you have to consider what will be the end product. How are we gonna deal with this, this waste generated from this product? So this is something that uh, really needs to be planned ahead um, for each uh, um, hotels or, or not just hotels, commercial and so forth, businesses is how we we manage the end product of uh, the end product so that it won't go to the field to or so forth. Um, so um, in conclusion, I would like to conclude um, my presentation, um, waste management is vital to assist with managing waste and reducing the generation of waste as well as reducing impacts of waste on the environment and public health. And uh, developing waste management plans in hotels and policies of waste management is important to start reducing the waste generation in the tourism sector. And uh, I would like also to emphasize that waste our resources if managed well. So this is something that we need to, to think of that waste is not just waste that goes into the landfill. It can be reused as resources if we manage them well from the beginning, as I have mentioned in the waste management process. Um, thank you and Raftai uh, Lassi for your time. And uh, I have a uh, discussion uh, activity if you don't mind. Um, if we, you can just have two groups just to discuss these two questions and we can have a group discussion after maybe a five minutes or so just to discuss what, you, what are the challenges you faced in managing waste from, your, from each sector or even at home, whichever um, one that's uh, applicable to you and how to deal with waste problems in Samoa. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Suzanne, for that presentation. And uh, yeah, Suzanne has given us uh, some few topics to discuss in mind. Uh, one, she says, you know, what are the challenges you face in uh, 
have you wasted? I think one of the areas of the you will waste in some manner. So, what are the challenges you have in terms of this, you know, capacity waste or time waste? What kind of waste that's generated? What did you do? Uh, and secondly, he said <clears throat> how to deal with waste problems in uh, apps and so that uh, stuff like uh, plastic bands, stuff like that. What about what do you think you might help to curtail or uh, yeah, solve some of issues? So, do you have uh, anything else to add, please? Thank you, Ivan. And uh, this is something to help you out. So, mm. There are uh, factors that we identify which requires that most like significant waste compared to the last 30 or 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. First one is population increase, second one is uh, urbanization, mm -hmm. the third and most important one is that us are more because of the economy of scale that we have. Mm -hmm. We are so dependent on imported goods and products. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one is our negligence. We think that waste, your waste, is somebody else's business. Like Susanna mentioned, you know, waste management is everyone's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you turn away waste. Like with today, you have tissues outside there, food mm -hmm. scraps, you turn away waste every second. So how to deal with it? It's not just MNRD's responsibility. It's our collective responsibility. Even like, uh, even the hotels. We have identified some of the beach fallers. They dump rubbish somewhere else. Mm -hmm. The fact is that uh, the current collection that we have is concentrated household labor only. Mm -hmm. because we include the commercial sector. So, we might not come a soul within one day because commercial sector generates huge amount of waste. Even the government agencies, that's why government agencies for the commercial sector, they are responsible for their own waste transport to Tafanata and by other land use. The same with the hotel. But however, for the sake of the accommodation operators, they can have private uh, agreements with, uh, with, a private, uh, with a collector. The reason, the other reason is that um, the capacity of our waste collectors now, there are only a few of them with limited resources like number of trucks. So that's why, that's another reason. As to some mentioned from the audits that was uh, the big, for example, the generation weight, that's 20.28 uh, uh, kilogram per person per day. That means you, me, we generate 280 grams per day. So think about it, the population of Samoa, so generate uh, approximately like 27,000 plus tons of waste every year. So even we try, you've heard about waste minimization, waste reduction, it's pretty hard for the Pacific, including mm -hmm. Samoa. We tried, so we are now piloting um, recycling the circular economy through our projects. We have the Chaiku projects, we have the UNDP issuing projects. All that we try to do is to find ways, especially for plastic art. Because we, in Samoa, we have 20 plus uh, companies that are part of the board. So you, if you see around, you know, we have weddings, we have funerals, we have all those stuff. You always see this. And the other problem is that for PET, it's called PET plastic bottle. It's a very, very low value item compared to scrap metal and e-waste. About three years ago, China, that was the, the, the market for plastic was China. They closed their market now. So we tried to find other places and other initiatives to deal with plastic. Uh, for, we are now trying with, uh, and I don't know whether you've heard about the uh, more Recycling and Waste Management Association. It was established under our Chaiko project, and they are very, very active at the moment. So we now have a pilot project with Chaiko. We try to deal with plastic. And now, if you have a time to visit Tafanata at their headquarters, they're using class, we're using class to produce the class, the class classes to produce sand. Mm -hmm. And now they are manufacturing bricks from, from sand. 
And we are about to do with the plastic, try to repurpose the plastic. So that with the machines out there already, so that we can have some sort of slabs or bricks from plastic. And for tourism sector in terms of uh, plastic, it is very, very important that we have the, one component of the, the oldest that we do with World Bank is IUCN's interest in marine plastic. And there are impacts in the tourism sector. For example, negative publicity and reputation, reduced revenue, reduced recreational opportunities. Um, we had the sort of like discussion with uh, IUCN and the sector. There are three sectors that involve the IUCN uh, plastic waste free islands project. It's the fishery sector, tourism sector, and waste management sector. We can see that when we talk about plastic, why fisheries? Because right now, if you see, even if you can see those uh, clips on YouTube, there's no water fishermen's land on big dump. They, they, they are discouraged by fishing equipment in the sea. That was a problem, that's why. So um, not only they are dumping the, the fishing keys in the sea, it really affects uh, sea and premium sources. That's why we opted for our plastic ban. Well, we do it face by face. So just this year, last year we start banning the styrofoam plates. You know, for example, for the for mm -hmm. And now you see yesterday from the lunch, that's a paper-based uh, plate with bamboo for the night. Right to, to, to promote. And currently there's a high level dialogue that's going on. We try and the club was trying to have a treaty to deal with plastic. Uh, very soon, plastic will be classified as a hazardous waste <clears throat> because inside the plastic, there are various chemicals, dangerous chemicals in it, which can affect us. In 2015, uh, <clears throat> uh, there was a survey including four islands and uh, for microplastic. Uh, from, the, from the whole result, it's so sad. So, so sad. Because it that's where they include some more. So we took the samples from fish, and the sad result was that 97% of all the fish that was surveyed contain microplastic. So, in other words, like Creepy Mesh, uh, Greg mentioned yesterday, because us samples, we do depend on fish, you know, marine, marine sources. So, in other words, we already plastic we're already in our food chain. So, we're eating plastic when we eat fish. So that's why we try to deal with mm -hmm. plastic uh, uh, pollution, big marine pollution. Like I said, the global community that's leading by United Nations Environment Agency in here. So there's a high level dialogue going on now. They try to have a global binding instrument to deal with plastic. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that, you know, us specifically, you know, to be honest, this is a fact. Globally, we only contribute about 1.3% of plastic pollution. Similar to climate change. That's an issue about plastic. You no, know, like on climate change, we you know, we produce less emission compared to those uh, developed countries. The same with plastic. The sad news is that Samoan Pacific Island, we are recipient of this because plastic is a transpounding uh, sort of waste. You know, you can care by sea. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are working very hard on that. That UNIA dialogue, you know, those well countries, because the initial dialogue that we have by region is that we have to tackle, look at the life cycle of plastic. Mm -hmm. But from the dialogue, they try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we have to tackle the source. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have to redesign the products, all that. That's why circular economy comes in. So that you know, the products that the manufacturer last long. It can be recycled, it can be reused. Right now, that's, that's, a, that's a good about recycling uh, concept. Because all that we have now is that you know, they're from natural resources. Mm -hmm. So those natural resources are they're being exploited and extracted. You know, it's, they are getting less and less. So that's why um, um, recycling, the score three R concepts, uh, you know, reduce, reuse, or recycle. So there's another hour that we added to it. It's 
return, plus return. So three hours plus return. Like I said, it's our collective responsibility. It's our effort mm. from everyone, even the commercial sector, whatever, tourism sector, the, the operators. It's all our collective effort. You know, just no matter why we, we promote ourselves, most very clean and very pristine, and then it comes down to us. That's why it's our business too. Mm, so that's why I always go to the media and try to promote this one. New Zealand won't come and kill Samoa. We kill Samoa ourselves. It's our responsibility, in a sense. So that's why, even that's another impact of plastic, the tourism sector. So there's a huge loss from plastic, uh, for tourism sector from plastic. It's about 20 plus million tons a year. We don't deal with plastic. So that's why we try to have this, uh, this sort of like YMCN project, just to help out with uh, tourism operators like Instead of uh, promoting uh, puddle waters, you can have this specific, like the one just outside. It's connected to the water pipe and it's filtered there. You can cool there to that. You can use the state of blue plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, like Greg uh, mentioned, say, if you think, if you check where to, to travel, you, know, you go to the duty free shops. That's why, and that's why we check our duty free shop at um, Paleolo was stuff. And so we, we advise them to stop using plastic. <laughs> they, like you see those in the new patch, yeah. so you're promoting that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that uh, in 2019, we hosted the Pacific Games. That was the first plastic free games that we had. It was a huge effort. So, go in line with our plastic pen the same year because I've got the pen uh, mm -hmm. that's like 2019. So, we brought from there. So, Solomon Islands and Lexus, it's very challenge for them mm -hmm. for hosting the uh, Pacific Games. So it's a huge effort. No, we cannot do it ourselves. It's all of us who can do it. And that's why as a presentation by Susan, it's very, very important. Because you know, we sometimes we you don't you know, we don't think uh, deeply about it. And there's another thing like, you know, when you go to your shopping, you budget your money. The same mentality that you have to do with waste. Before you buy a product, you think. When you buy it, what's going to happen is it becomes waste. That's why we have to buy bulk, you know that, to reduce waste. And then now there's a, we try to add that uh, scientific research for microplastics. So we're just waiting for a uh, road back to approve that so that we can now map our, our EEZ where we're at the hot spot for plastic, microplastic. Mm -hmm. so, you know, microplastic contains like every, like, everywhere. You talk about sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Like plastics inside there, nearly everything is plastic. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. But even the tires, I thought plastic is not no rubber, so we don't buy this plastic in there. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is that when we burn, because that's the traditional way that we used to from um, way back, we burn our rubbish. Are there are like uh, so some of it, organic waste is not really an issue for Samoa, no, it's restaurants and even the hotels. Yeah, you know, other the farmers will just go with the parties there just for a full share. Mm -hmm. So uh, food waste is not really a problem here in Sabo, but all the other waste streams, you know. We have our cell phones, these are very hazardous waste because it's electronic waste when they, they become waste. But they are they are recycled. You no, know, uh, I can tell you even the laptops, mm -hmm. the, the circuit boards inside those, they contain very, very valuable metals. They contain code. And so you see, but if you open your phone, open it, and you look at the circuit, the circuit board, you can actually type on those. I saw it when I went to Japan and I saw that. They recycle all the electronics and they, and at the end product, you know, so the, those future are cold, silver. And that's why here in the Pacific is a challenge because we don't have that technology. We don't have the capacity, we don't have the fund to do that compared to developed countries. So that's why we try hard first to do and manage our own waste. But like I said, it's everybody's responsibility. You know, like I said, no, no one will come clean up some, we ask some to clean up our own some. Especially like you know, the tourism sector, it's very important. Plan and I'm challenging SDA and SHA. You should have a waste management plan with the operation that will help us. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Sorry, that was... one uh, comment or question, India. Thank you. Um, just uh, an additional comment uh, towards the Torah here. I think one way um, for us to um, deal with the challenges of waste management in Samoa is through our EIAs. Um, I guess this is something that uh, you know the consultants that has been developing um, EIAs for for any kind of development uh, should take a um, take into of how include in the EIAs the waste management issues because um, we have received some uh, EIA some peer reports under the waste management uh, section. Uh, just two um, sentences, like this waste and how we, we dispose, how we collect, and then that's it. Yes. But you have noticed from the presentation um, by Susanna and those are sharing information, you know, our population is increasing and so as the generation of waste. So I guess this is something that we need to identify for, for such um, development. So you need to identify all different types of waste streams that has been generated from the development. Um, this is before, during, and after constructions and during the operational of the development. And also, they need to include a detailed plan, methodologies on how they will collect, how they will transport, how they will store, and how they will dispose of such waste for example, in hotels, restaurants, and other businesses. And not only that, they also need to have an effective um, segregation plan. Because as uh, you mentioned, uh, there are lots of recyclable materials that have been generating, um, to, for example, uh, hotels. So I guess they need to have a segregation plan, okay? So that uh, just to ensure no recyclables go to the landfill. So I guess that's uh, one way that we need to work together is through our EIAs and the development of their and their report for any kind of development. Thank you. Thank you so Excellent. Much. Excellent. That's, that's, a, that's a really good um, point there that the EIAs and as, as um, Utile pointed out, the approval conditions for a development come out of the EIAs and the EMPs so and the recommendations from the, from the various agencies. So. Yes, the EIA can be a mechanism for helping um, you start to deal with the waste issue, for, for at least for new developments, to have, have, him, have them put in place better waste management plans. Yeah. So, Greg, if I can just um, add Go to ahead. that. Sure. Yeah, this point has been like uh, very correctly identified because um, waste is one of the key management plans that is an attachment to the EIA itself. Yeah. Um, you know, alongside with, you know, environmental management plan, site management plan. And I think this also goes, um, uh, you know, further to Fierso So's comments about um, our consultants and um, also, you know, building that capacity to know that when you do a waste management plan, it must, you know, uh, cover the very basic um, points that Fierso So covered about. If you're not just saying, oh, all the waste that we'll generate will just go to Tafai okay. Nata, thank you. Like usually it's yeah. the line, mm -hmm. but they really have to go down to the details of like, you know, prompting what types of, of waste are we going to generate and how are we going to manage them? And what mm -hmm. are the you know, acceptable ways um, of, of managing those um, waste? Excellent. So, yeah, so I think it really is um, a, a good discussion that we have here. Uh, on on how we can better improve um, our waste management practices, um, not only through our development consent processes, but also for us as a person. So I think that was a very good talk from Setor about the responsibility of waste management is not just MNREs because they're looking yeah. after the, the waste management. It should be it should be on everyone really. And uh, yeah, and are there? Um, Sorry, going back to um, Via Soso's um, um, point that she made um, very, very well, and 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 to tell us um, that it's not um, it's not just theirs. Um, do you, when you provide your feedback to um, to the proponents and and to um, um, active um, licensees, 
do you do you have like a standard that you issue them and say, well, okay, this is actually what we're looking for, and this is why your plan is not up to scratch? Do you have some sort of standard that you you issue out, or do you have to literally go through line by line and go, okay, this is how you have to fix it. This is what you should have done. This is what's missing. Or do you or do you have something you can just push out to them and say, this is what you really need to be doing? Sorry, Greg, can I just ask, is that question directed towards me or MNRE? Uh, sorry, to, to MNRE, because that, that, if they have that, that would be really helpful for you. So I'm just wondering when they when they review these plans and they go these are this is abysmal, do they do they literally have to go through line by line and correct it, or do they have something that they can sort of go this is at least what you must be doing. You must have these have these measures in place. This is what we're looking for. Thank you, Craig. Uh, so after that, we do have our national waste management strategy. Uh, we do have our waste management act. So those are the is that once we receive a referral from um, OMA, then mm -hmm. we the type of development, and then we always have waste management part of the So we always yeah. have that to um, uh, 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 review and then forward mm -hmm. to final. But is there, a, is there a standard so that like, say, say I wanted to put in a new development and I, I want to write up a waste management plan. Can I come to you and you provide me with a, a minimum standard of things that I need to consider? Or do I just sort of write it and then you review it and then you you sort of go, uh, that's that kind of meets what we're looking for. Or is there something you then, you know, you send to me, you go, you know, you have to do it like this. Is there something like that that you have ready, like a standard that's that's issued? Or do you literally have to check and 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 question every little action that they they've done? What we usually do when we receive a referral, then we have to, like I mentioned, like depends on the type of the nature of the development. Yeah, yeah. Straight away, we just put recommendation in, a, in our okay. review to okay. do from the construction phase and then to yeah. the construction phase and then the operation phase. So we always keep advice on that for waste management. Mm -hmm. Okay. So All right. You. May I add on that? Yeah, please. Um, the recommendations we made for the review is based on what we have received at the IB, but I guess this is something that we consider as a way to do it is for those consultants that uh, do the develop the IAs for any development. I guess either we need to have a training with them or they come to us and discuss, and then we can explain to them of what has to go into their waste management plan on the collection of waste and uh, the generation and the detail. Um, approaches that they need to include in the EIAs. Yes. Excellent, yes. Uh, Sorry, if I can just add on that point about really, again, the consultant who is in charge of doing the IA, this is their responsibility mm -hmm. to find. Yes. And mm -hmm. the understanding is it's their professional duty that when they're preparing this, that they must go to all the affected agencies, I mean, or, I mean the agencies mm -hmm. relating to the impacts that they know will be generated from the EIA to go find out what the standards are. I mean, that's their professional and moral duty as a professional to do. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a, just to help with that as well, I mean, we have a very, well, I, I suppose at the moment, there's, we have an EIA guideline yeah. that we are trying to it's, uh, it put all of these in so to help the professionals. But we're hoping that when you become an EIA consultant, you should already be at a level where we, you know, you shouldn't need a guideline to, to point to what to do. You should already be a, 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 practice, a practitioner in the environmental field that you should know what to do and where to go. And, um, but, you know, again, what, that um, brings us to the point again, when you come in for that pre-application meeting, the developer, usually what we also say to the developer at that stage is when you, if you do need an EIA and when your EIA person or consultant is confirmed, please invite them to also come into our office to have a chat about the finer details about that. Yeah. This is where we can really sort this out then um, and tailor and customize the advice that we give to them based on that development. But I think those are just the points we, we make. So we have an EIA guideline that sort of yeah. for every management type of management plan that's typical, this is what you should really include for it uh, based on the common comments that we get from these referrer agencies this, uh, that we have. But again, uh, what our expectation is, is that this EIA consultant should really go 
and chat with all the, the agencies that the EIA will go to and do their homework in really finding out what exactly the all the standards that they would need to cover in their EIA uh, and get it right on the first go. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Ivan, do we have, um, I think we might be able to take one more question um, and then we'll have to make a decision about whether we um, postpone lunch and have the next presentation or we break for lunch. Hi. I just have, actually have a question um, from okay. who's joining in. So they just wanted to ask, and uh, uh, this question is directed to MNRE. It's for um, our developments that happen in the rural areas. And what is your recommendation of where they should take their rubbish to? You know, are they allowed to delegate an area in the rural area to dispose of their rubbish? Or should they all conform and come to Tsapa Inatsa? Because it's actually a practice as well that we usually find is, you know, in the rural areas, they'll just dig a hole with it and dump their rubbish in there and say, oh, it's allowed. But we will, can we just ask uh, our colleagues from MNRE? Please. Thank you. Very good. Basically, yeah, simply no, it's not allowed. <laughs> yeah. So, that explains where the waste is going. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, waste to Tsapa Inatsa. Tsapa Inatsa. That's right. Otherwise, yeah, we yeah, tried yeah. to look for utility uh, uh, landfill sites. Mm -hmm. so, but it's a huge exercise because there are criteria that we try to look at. It'll be millions of dollars. So, so, so under the act, you're not allowed to do that. Please let them know that. Yes. <laughs> Go to Tampa and that's all by our no burning. And no burning of rubbish. <laughs> uh, any and, no. yeah. burning. and the ocean is not a dump, and nor is the and, river. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, oh, I put it in the river. Now it's gone. Oh, no. oh good. Yeah. yeah. I've seen that happen. Um, we did have, also have a question. It's not specifically solid waste. I saw it comes from, from SPTO. They were asking about best practices or some examples of methodologies for dealing with um, ozone depleting substances. So how do you deal with legacy ozone depleting substances? Do we have uh, anyone from MNRE who can... Um, Fiasoso, are you able to respond to that? Um, also, uh, also um, uh, waste is with uh, meds, but uh, I guess the process, they have to contact the ozone team mm -hmm. at Meteorology, because they have to um, dismantle and take out the gases, mm -hmm. you know, from those uh, refrigerators, and then after, it will go to the landfill, mm -hmm. the, the white waste and the mm -hmm. fridges and... Okay, still goes to landfill. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we also have a question from. Is there a question there? Oh, no, okay. sorry. It's not a question, but okay. uh, go ahead. Uh, an old zone section, and uh, the representative is not in, in this room, but um, as far as I, I know, is that we have a national old zone group. And they meet every like every month or something like that. Mm -hmm. This does issue like this. And uh, they uh, they are well into the uh, uh, I mean, the uh, those things where they they they, they set uh, a time limit where they can make that both those gases are, 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 are controlled. So, but um, unfortunately, the, the, they're not here, but um, I, I <clears throat> Okay, that's all right. Thank you for, thank you for that, um, letting us know that there, there is a, there is a, a panel that meets and, but yeah, they're, they're not here to talk, the representative's not here to talk. I can also see there's a question from SPTO. Um, Mr. Se has his hand raised. Mr. Se, do you want to um, ask your question? Hi, Greg. Um, it's me here, Tina. Oh, uh, well, are you guys using each other's laptops? Okay. Hi, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the same room. Okay. Um, 
So sorry, um, just a question here um, with regards to the um, collection, um, I mean, sorry, uh, the cost for hotels uh, to bring commercial waste to um, the, the uh, landfill. Um, how much does it cost uh, uh, on average? And um, do you have classifications, uh, different rates, sorry, for the bigger hotels and beach parlors or are they the same? I'm going to hand that question to Satoa. Yep. Currently, we do have two fees. Uh, it depends on the type of waste and depends on the weight. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, for general waste, it costs about 50 cents a kilo. It's very low, but uh, try to. 50 cents a kilo. 50 cents a kilo. 50 cents. So that's like, um, yeah, like 50, less than 50 cents um, Fijian dollars. Yeah. Right, um, and uh, uh, the second one, Seto, is um, so for the beach palace in the rural areas or the hotels in the rural areas um, who can't afford to take the waste all the way to Tafaingasa and to Vayasa, um, can they use the, 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 the normal waste collection services that are provided by government? Are they not allowed to? Uh, well, that's a commercial uh, activity. So, like I mentioned, collection uh, scheme is for household only, but they can make private deals with the collector. So like, for example, they can pay like 30 tala for a week for them to collect their waste. Mm -hmm. Same here for Polo and Savai, for Polo and Savai. Okay, 30 tala. They try to, to, to promote to like all other suppliers it's called like EBR, like standard producer, provider, responsibility. So right. like, not just like, you no, know, they aim to make money, but you know, they have the responsibility for the environment. Mm -hmm. I've been trying, no, no, let's try to develop a voluta pay system sort of thing, like through a levy and the user pay system for the service. So we are working on that. Okay. Oh. That, that's 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 really good to hear. So I just had a question, um, and it's from some, some other jurisdictions around the world um, where they have these sort of smaller operators which necessarily aren't able to fund everything individually for a collection service. Is there, you mentioned that you're looking at a user pays levy. Uh, any of the beach fellows sort of forming a, a cooperative um, or any of the smaller operators working together to have like a muni municipality to just basically have them all pay together and then have their, their waste collected from a particular area or is, is everyone just basically doing it on their own? Are there any collaborations going within the tourism sector to help, you know, like this is, this is their income, this is their stretch of beach, are they working together? Any, maybe STA knows? Thanks, Greg. Um no, um, in terms of uh, collaboration between uh, operators, no, there there aren't any uh, existing at the moment. But um, I think, as Sotoa mentioned, um, you know, it's something that uh, we'll probably need to look into if there's, um, you know, in terms of um, commercial businesses having to pay their own, um, you know, as they're not covered under the household, um, it would make sense for them to collaborate um, in particular areas which they're located. Yeah, it was one of the things that struck me when I when I was back living in Samoa is that the beaches there, uh, the ones run by um, the beach fellows and the ones that are doing well, they, they keep everything off the beach. They, they pick it up, they regularly go out and collect their waste. What they do with it, I'm not always sure, but they always keep their beach because they know that's their attraction. They keep that, they keep that very clean. And I was always very impressed by that. I mean, I live in Australia and we rely on the councils and uh, yeah, basically they have to go through with giant rakes every now and then and, and clean it up or community groups go down there. But um, it's the operators in Samoa, it's their beach, you pay to go use it. And that money, they seem to be using that to, to help fund cleaning it up. What they're doing with that waste, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but at least they're, they're keeping it off of the sand and out of the areas where the tourists are. So uh, hopefully they're, they're disposing of it appropriately. Yes. Uh, okay. um, oh, yeah. Sorry, Ivan. Okay, yeah. Oh, Jope. Oh, you raised something important. 
Sorry for bringing up that uh, example of town city, just to make my point a bit clear. And, and even the hospital, mm. and even last prep, you come and monitor. Where are these waste from uh, the sink going? Where is the waste from the toilet going? So there must be standards. Yeah. So thank you, Joker. Maybe I'll just um, before we pass it on, but. Um, my, I can contribute to that a little. So we are currently right now finalizing our effluent standards. Uh, so it, I just talked about this a little bit earlier as well, but we have national effluent standards that regulates the pollution that's being discharged with whoever's treating water and discharging. So we have, it, it regulates government itself, which is SWAP because they have their big um, town water uh, wastewater treatment plant. And then also private companies who have their own on-site wastewater treatments and who are also discharging like um, uh, what you call by Lima breweries yes. and for example, and then tell me I've seen that as well. And under this effluent standards as well, it does uh, give out the responsibilities of who shall be uh, should monitor. And it's currently sitting under the sanitation uh, sector of government, uh, which uh, I'm Puma is a part of, and we also have um, MNRE is also a part of that. And um, I think at the moment though, because it, uh, the actual monitoring itself is a capacity issue. We do not have numbers to be constantly monitoring. I don't know, but I have a feeling that the mechanism that we're using right now is that we in, uh, are requiring at the moment until we finalize this and then employ people to do the monitoring, we're requiring the developer to do their testing and to report back to the sector on the uh, on the pollution rates to see if they're meeting the minimum loads that you need uh, before you discharge them. So I I, I, um, I just have to reconvene back to our um, colleague who is our sanitation member. But while we're getting this national um, standards endorsed and then we can uh, government can take on the role of actively monitoring all these um responsibilities i think that i think that's what the mechanism that we're using now so for example swa i know for a fact that they have to uh test themselves so they have to continuously do the testing and then report back puma actually or um under the waterfront up here waterfront um project we've been doing um some independent water 
uh, quality testing as well of all the areas in the waterfront where we know all these outfalls are going to. So, and then we kind of use that to double check the developers that is, you know, because obviously when sometimes when the developer um, tests their own things, they have a tendency to under report things or maybe not share the entirety of um, the issue. So uh, those are the things that we're doing. But I think right now that government is already uh, highlighted that and we're trying to sort out amongst ourselves too the responsibilities of who will be the main agency um, that will also do water quality monitoring uh, for all these outfalls. Um, if, um, if anyone wants to, but I, I know that's the arrangement that we have right now in the sanitation sector. Thank you. <coughs> but I think, I'm oh, sorry, just to add on, when this um, system of you know payment uh, system comes on for all those discharging, um, it will obviously only help with um, enforcement and compliance mm -hmm. and also discouraging, you know, pollution. Uh, maybe when there's a payment system, people will have to double think and think, oh, is it really worth what I'm doing? Is there another way? It will force them to look at other ways to creatively manage space without actually just directly discharging or taking it to Tafai Nata and just dumping it there and making it someone else's problem. So, um, you know, we as um, regulators obviously support um, systems like this because it will make everyone's um, life a bit easier. And it will also force um, people to be more responsible for the waste that they generate. Thanks. Well, just to add on that, uh, you said there are different political based systems that they can adapt. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether I've heard about for uh, it's, a, it's called container deposit levy, mm -hmm. which only target container. But what we're trying to develop is some sort of like including other problematic ways that we can recover, process a ship, uh, including even. So our system will try to develop is called advanced recovery fee. Mm -hmm. Like for example, your vehicle, mm -hmm. when you get your vehicle, you have to prepay for recycling. All that so it's, it's a common practice in, in developed countries, and then you don't have to worry about um, you know, your car when it comes waste when you know it's called in a flight vehicle, yeah. so it's all taken there, taken care. So, from that, for not only to, 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 to encourage people to be responsible, but for recycling to assist recycling operation, like for example, to recover, to process, you know, because they need equipment. And then, luckily, we do still have the, that human spread called Monotaka, which is why a company that they can you know, ship the uh, the materials you know, for free. So that's basically the idea of uh, advanced recovery fee that we work with back to space. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's been some really good and robust discussions there and some really good information that I've, um, I've picked up at least. And I hope some of you have, uh, have been getting out of that. Um, SPTO um, has, has got one of the next sessions coming up, but we are running a little, a little behind schedule. Um, I'll just check, Ivan, has the lunch arrived? Yes, the lunch is up. Okay, so um, before um, people get too hungry, um, may I request that we take the lunch break now and then come back, if you could please come back for SPTO's um, sessions and for Repenny who will be presenting um, on renewables and, and their role in sustainable development. Um, any, anyone have any objection to that? I have a question. Oh, oh okay. Question. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's directed to MNRI. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, do you enforce waste management in communities? And if you do, how do you do this? Especially when we're trying to protect our natural resources, including birds and the sea. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know how we enforce how we uh, monitor that. Uh, that was another thing that we were discussing because, you know, for limited staff. Mm -hmm. And the uh, waste management act include no tapping of those limits. And that's under uh, water resources division to accident. 
So what we're trying to do to this uh not this table means so we have that uh, uh, um, so uh, we receive some complaint from them and we go up and check. Mm -hmm. So we have that's another challenge for us. You know, for example, they, even right now we don't have stock so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're using that platform <laughs> for us to check to help us out. I think we share the same um, problems with DC and we also are using similar solutions where we rely also on public um, reports to assist us and let their eyes be our eyes as well because our eyes cannot be everywhere at the same time. So yeah, yeah and we try to with uh, UFDB, try to develop an app Facebook. Okay. Thank you, everyone.